Hey, I'm Grant. Welcome to Second Plate. I was inspired to make this show because often when I was working to cook something for either just myself or someone else, I always had to buy these big packs of ingredients where I just couldn't go through them all myself. If I had to buy like two pounds of onions or a giant thing of Brussels sprouts, I just physically couldn't go through those ingredients. So basically what the goal of this show was to, on one hand, have a lot of recipes that could all flow through each other. So say if I had to buy mushrooms, like for our previous dish, I could then use them in this next dish without it being a big deal. If you don't have them, it's not a big deal. But if you do, you can kind of bring them in so they don't have to just go to waste. So today what I'm gonna be making is, it's Hawaiian burgers, which basically entail burgers, pineapples, spam with teriyaki sauce, and I'm gonna be putting them on Kaiser rolls, which basically look like either this, or sometimes you can see them where there's two cuts across the middle. So what I'm gonna actually be starting with is I'm gonna be grilling the pineapple and the spam. What's kind of interesting I like about pineapple is you consider this to be like obviously a very, I guess, summery fruit, but I think it's actually in season in the winter for us. So it's actually pretty good on sale right now, even though you wouldn't think of it because it's so freezing out. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this off. Now, I'm gonna do this with a knife, but if you have a pineapple core, it is more efficient. What I'm gonna be doing, in addition to this, is I'm going to be cutting this basically straight down like this, and I'm gonna be getting two almost like fillets of pineapple, two giant slices, and then I'm gonna be chunking the rest. And then with those chunks, I'm going to be taking that, I'm gonna be taking that, any excess spam, any veggies, I have some mushrooms, I have an onion I'm gonna quarter, and some grape tomatoes, and I'm gonna be putting those on some kebabs and cooking those alongside the rest of the dish just to kind of like, again, handle any extra ingredients I might have, or like if you have someone who doesn't want a whole burger, you can easily do that. Plus it's super customizable. Like if you don't want the onions, you just don't put them on. And it's a nice way to use the rest of the pineapple because that's one downside is if you want a fresh pineapple, you have to buy the entire pineapple. But if you want, you can also get like say pineapple rings, also popular, or chunks, depending on what you want to do with it. So I'm gonna go ahead again, and I'm gonna slice first the top and then the bottom. This is something where you don't need to get super flat but the flatter it is, the nicer it is, because it's gonna sit very nice on your countertop. I used to do this for a job where I had to go chunk pineapple all the time, and that's just one thing that I noticed, where if you get like right this, like right there on that slant, and then you have to like cut this way, it's so infuriating. So getting a nice one is just a quality of life thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and slice basically around this. It's almost like peeling potato as I'm gonna keep cutting around. And essentially I'm trying to get rid of all these little divots. That's usually what I look for. So I'm just gonna kinda wing this. Generally speaking, the better you are, the more pineapple you can get out of this, but it's not a big deal if you have to cut super close. And if you're feeling particularly adventurous, it is actually possible to go completely around, where if I were to say, cut in like this and then cut around, that's possible if you feel like it. You do get a lot more pineapple, but it's probably a little bit more stress than it's worth. And if you really are worried about maximizing pineapple, I would just buy canned pineapple. So, now the big issue in the, that I'm gonna do is with this, because I don't have a pineapple core, is there is the core. It's just like an apple where you don't want to eat this. And if you have a core, essentially what that lets you do is cut just that out with the circular hole. But the way I'm gonna get around that is again, I'm going to be cutting it into almost like a patty or a slice. So I'm gonna cut it like this, where these are gonna be our slices. I like to make four, because that gives you a good range, and then you can even go and cut these in half after and then I'm going to chunk the rest of this. So just like you would basically, I don't know, like an apple or something for a salad. I'm going to take this, and I'll just chop this up for our skewers. The next thing I'm going to be doing, and this is just purely for the skewers, but obviously, again, you could take this and put this on the burger, is I'm going to quarter this onion. Perfect. I want big chunks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this like so, again in half, once more, in. And the goal of cutting it this way really is basically to kind of keep the onion intact. I'm not exactly a master of it, but there's several ways to cut an onion where you basically don't disturb its state. I'm gonna cut them down like this to get them reasonable. Kind of start splitting this up. So we got our pineapple, onions. I also have some mushrooms pre-cut. But the next one though is probably the weirdest part of the dish I think is which is spam. This is something where it's just interesting because 
like with pineapple, I would never buy Spam if it wasn't for a dish like this. But I very heavily associate with uh, Hawaiian food. I had a friend whose mother would always cook Hawaiian food because they're Hawaiian. And that was a big thing, is all like these different variations of like pineapple, Spam, and just tons of different spices. So I like to include it because it's just, more than anything, it's interesting. Really, it just kind of tastes like an odder version of ham. But it, it's neat. Like it's something where like just seeing that on the table, it's like, what's that? What are, what's he going to use it for? So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. It's basically just canned processed meats, ham. I am going to cut it first off for the burgers, so it's kind of like a, uh, a deli meat. And also, this is cured. It's just like bacon, so you can eat this raw, so it's not like a big issue if this touches. And the rest, I want to go ahead and dice up, because this works really well on a grill. What I like to do with kebabs is you just kind of like let them out and just have people like, hey, here's your kebab skewer. You go put on what you want. I got four skewers. You can use a uh, Honestly, basically wooden ones as well. But I got these just because I knew it's, these are really cheap. They're just metal poles. They're sanitary, very easy to wash. And basically, there's so many things where you can cook normally or you can just put on a skewer and they just go right on, say, a grill. So I'm just going to go start. No real, I don't know, uh, perfect way to do this. If you want, you can put peppers on. If you want a lot of heat, you can, say, put other kinds of meat. The main thing I say is just to do variety. But you don't want any meat? Totally do it that way. It doesn't affect how I cook it. So the next goal is I'm going to actually be going to be grilling this and putting teriyaki on it before I do my burgers. Generally, when you're actually going in one go, you can do it all at once, but I just want to kind of conserve my space and show off how, like what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this down. This is already on and preheated. I'm going to lay the pineapple on. I'm essentially browning the pineapple and the Spam. One thing I have noticed from doing this recipe for a little while is I actually want to not only brown the pineapple, but I also want to cook down the juice on it. Because if you don't, and particularly if you don't have really thick buns, then the juice that comes off when you bite into the pineapple is too much, you'll make the bun soggy. But you can, if you can leave it on just a little bit longer and cook that off, you don't really notice it, and it helps, again, like the actual consumption of the food so much better. And again, this is already done, but if you want, you can add more spices. You can basically treat like any other meat, like salt, pepper, the same stuff I would put on the burger. You don't need to. Essentially, what I'll be doing is I just have a, some Kikkoman, like teriyaki sauce, you could use soy sauce, I've seen, or Cestershire. Whatever floats your boat, just salt, pepper. So this is 80-20, so 80% lean, 20% fat. I know like one mistake I made when I was really early on is it could be very tempting to be like, oh, I don't want a ton of fat in my burgers, I want to cut down on like the calories. And you don't want to do that because the fat's very important in, particularly for burgers, for like holding its shape. So you can cut down to like, say, 90% lean, 95% lean, and they'll cook, but they don't have nearly the same flavor and they don't like hold together quite the same or hold like their juice. Cut this into force, I'm gonna make it a ball, throw it on the grill. But there's a whole world you can get into if you want where it's like, okay, when I get this ready and going, I'm going to say, I got to salt and pepper it the night before, form it, bring it out, salt it, put it back in the fridge, and you can do all these like crazy awesome little things to like really micromanage and improve your burger, but you don't need to. Like at its heart, it's so simple and so easy to do, but you don't need to. But it's there if you want it. I'm gonna discard this. So I got my four little quarters of ground beef. I'm gonna form them. I do have a patty uh, like mold, but it's not really anything you need. I'm mainly gonna get them nice, ground down, try and get a good ball. I like to get them super flat. I don't usually smash my burgers. That's one option you can do on the grill, is if you, like, just after you put it on, about like 30 seconds, you can take, say, a spatula and really smash it down. That works. I'm not going to, but I am going to get them nice and thin. And this is a very classic trick is leave a divot in the center because as it loses its moisture, it's going to pull together. And you end up with hockey pucks. That's what my parents always did when they made burgers. There's these thick, like, hockey pucks, which is fine if you're into that. But uh, I usually like to get flat because, again, going back to presentation, I want to make sure there's enough room on the bun for everything I want because I'm someone who likes a lot of veggies, particularly with this recipe. Like, we have big chunks of pineapple. We have big chunks of Spam. If I make a giant two-inch tall burger patty, that stuff's not going to fit on. 
And here's like one little area where ideally, again, what's important is that generally you could season these, put them back in the fridge. You can begin, when you're ready to cook them, you salt them, bring them down to like room temperature. You don't need to, but that is something you can kind of do if you want to just take it up to the next step. So I am going to use some salt, pepper. Again, I'm a huge fan of pepper. Like it's one of the first things when cooking, you like really start to smell. Where it's like, oh, that smells good. So I'm going to put a ton on in addition with the salt, but again, this is perfect. Just be like, hey, I made these. This is yours. How do you want it? Just salt, pepper it yourself, and then you can like give them that little level of control. So now that we've kind of like gotten these burgers, you know, pretty well salted, peppered. Again, this is something where I love to have just people come in and do it themselves. I'm going to go over here now and actually look at these. One thing that's nice is I usually will cook these in just like a nonstick skillet, but if you have this or a grill, you get those like really nice like griddle marks. And those are purely aesthetic mainly, like the browning is nice, the actual flavor, but it's not a big deal if you don't, but I do like it when you get those. Especially on the pineapple, it just looks so nice. So I'm gonna shift these down and try and get the burgers in on here as well. See, like the pineapple, like with that, like that just looks so good. And it just adds that like flavor. Like if you cook it in a pan, it's fine. But having the lines just like implies like so much more like, I don't know, artisanalness about it. It's just nice. I worked in a kitchen as a job, and that was one thing where it's just always worth it to say, grab a couple other uh, cases of pan spray than it is to say, <laughs> have to like mid shift clean down your griddle. Let's go ahead and shift these down. There you go. These should be done pretty quick, and then I can go slap the other burgers on. Actually, let's go ahead and take this nice little piece of stuff. Some of these smaller stuff. And if you want this to like say cook faster, you can cut the spam or the pineapples way thinner. If you want it to be a little even more like aesthetic, you can get the uh, pineapple rings with the cores out. And those are like the stereotypical like look for these burgers is a pineapple ring. So that's what I would honestly recommend if you're going look, but for ease and just like the fun of cutting up a pineapple yourself, I like buying my own. There we go. And you don't have to do these in the same pan. Something about like, I've always liked uh, meals that are very well combined. So like the idea of cooking this on top of where I just cooked the pineapple, it just kind of like floats my boat. So I'm gonna take this uh, teriyaki and I like to put it just straight on. I'm gonna leave stew without it just because you can kind of like taste the flavor and see. It's not, not required, but just add something. So just a little bit on each. And once the burgers are done, I'm gonna put a little bit on those as well. So I'm just gonna kind of flip this around in it. Makes it nice and brown. Like that's definitely a theme I've got going where things just look good when they're brown. Like, you know, like nice and uh, well cooked, seasoned. And the same with like the Worcestershire soy, you get that niceness on it. Kind of turn it. I basically want a nice glaze, and I'm going to cook that down as well. You can already start seeing the burgers kind of nice forming. Okay, going to move that down. Kind of clear off some space here. Now I want to talk a little bit now about these rolls that I have over here. So these are Kaiser rolls. Basically, they look like this. These are homemade. I made these last night. And you can totally use a bun. I'm a huge fan of buying, say, onion buns. But there's something awesome about just making your own bread. And again, it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the fact that you like made it yourself and you, there's like a story behind each one. Like I wrap these a couple different ways. So like here you can see like, oh, I didn't quite get all the way around on this one or this one I went for just like a basically like more of a pretzel knot. It's just kind of interesting. And in particular, one of the reasons I went and kind of, I guess you could say splurge for time on these is there's usually a lot of juice coming from the burger and the pineapple and the sauce. So I like having like a thicker bun like this. Whereas if I had just a basic hamburger bun, it could very easily just like get soggy. You can definitely like smell the teriyaki now though. Cool. I'm going to put these then alongside the rest. Wine burgers go ahead and continue to Cook.
again, having like worked actually in like a kitchen, a big thing is like actually temping it. So that's something that I just make sure I always want to do. Because that's how like I've always learned where you really can't go wrong with it. Oh yeah, those are basically done. They're about 165, which for ground meat is perfect. Generally like 165 means everything's good. I definitely have learned like from hat going and not really having anything like extra utensils in my kitchen going through and like how can I make this work? I feel like it's just a skill you kind of pick up as you cook. All right. Perfect time to go ahead and slap those on. Now these don't have to cook down at all. It's just basically almost warming up because again, everything on here is fine as is. Ideally, like uh, you could leave these on for a while, or if you're cooking these like outdoors in an actual grill, what's nice is you can say shut the lid, and then you don't have to worry about a bunch of the sides not getting cooked. But this is just where fun where it's like you know I just had this idea and I wanted to uh, toss these on because I had the skewers anyway. You know, like why not just kind of see how this kind of comes out because. I could totally see myself doing this in the future. So like, hey, got some extra ingredients. Let me just go ahead and toss those on and see what works out. I'm a huge fan of mustard, just because I feel like mustard's a great way to add a ton of flavor without a ton of mass. So like what I have right here is I've been on a big fan of just like I have jalapeno mustard. And this is something where I like mustard and usually I like some kind of spice to it. But a lot of times like if I'm putting say Mustard, pickles, onions, and then say, I don't know what else, spam, pineapple. It just won't stay. But if I get like a jalapeno mustard, it works far better. So I'm going to put this on one just for like my own sake. Kind of go around. And I like these little dispensaries. I know like if I put, were to put like say a, a ketchup or something on my burger, what I personally do is I actually have a giant tub of ketchup. And then I also have a small little, uh, like the very classic ketchup bottles that you would see. And that's the one where I refill that so I can get a really nice, like, fine, like, grain as I go across so it's nice and even. I get, like, super into it. There it is. I've got Colby Jack. Cheese is something where I feel like it's entirely personal preference. I have no recommended flavor of cheese for this. Because usually I would just be like, hey, I, I've got Swiss, I've got cheddar, Colby Jack, pepper jack. Personally, I'm a huge fan of cheddar. I like really sharp cheddar. Because I like, I guess you could say I like bold flavors. I like being able to taste it every sensation, whereas if I put just, I don't know, Swiss, like Swiss to me just feels really flat. And if I'm having it alongside pineapple, I'm, I just feel like I'm not gonna notice it. But something like a really nice cheddar, that's good. But I feel like if I had to choose like a classic cheese, I feel like it's really hard to go wrong with a Colby Jack. Plus in the vein of the show, this is what I just had around my house. And that's kind of the point, is that I don't have to go around and be like, oh, this only works with a white cheese, don't use yellow. It's like, no, just kind of get what you have. It'll always work out. So I'm gonna let that kind of melt down while we get this going. Load these off. Start with this nice thick one. And even just here, you can kind of see where, like, look at all like, the little things I could do to improve this. Like, it's totally fine, but, like, you know, like, maybe I could cut this, like, a little bit thinner or, you know, cut the top off if I feel like it's a little bit too thick. But as is, these are completely fine. Let's set these down right there while I let those continue. Then, generally speaking, I like to go next with a Spam just because, generally speaking, my burgers are flat. So I put the Spam on because the Spam also flat. Not a big deal, but again, like this does not affect the taste whatsoever. But the fact that it all just kind of sits on top of each other really, I think, impacts the fact, like how you actually consume it, if not the flavor. Like if I go the other way, where like pineapple, a lot of these are very uh, uneven. So if I put, say, uneven, go flat, uneven, flat, it just doesn't do anything for you. It just kind of ruins it before you even get to it. And usually one of the reasons I like kind of cutting one up in a smaller half is, first of all, it will fit the Spam better. I could buy a bigger tub of Spam, but I feel like if there's anything about this recipe that's intimidating, it's the Spam. Also the pineapple, but the Spam feels a little eccentric a lot of the times. Okay. So generally what I would do here is 
whatever kind of garnish you want. I've done pickles. Honestly, I, I like relish. I like a bit, I, I can talk all day about tomatoes on sandwiches. I like big, one single flat white tomato, usually underneath it. Generally, I like my lettuce on the bottom, but I didn't want to overdo it because it'd be very easy, depending on how the rolls come out, that you have this giant, really thick sandwich, and it's just impossible to get your mouth around, and I feel like that impacts it too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, mash these up as best I can. Not a big deal, gonna kinda make it work. I'm sure there's someone out there that's like, oh my god, you need to get, the, you need the tops to match the bottoms, but it's actually, you know, not that big of a deal. Like, if I had to go, say, go to one of my uh, reject rolls and just top it there, that's not a big deal. Like this one? Let's go toss this on for right now, because it's not a big deal, you know? And a lot of times, like, you think, like, having, say, like this one that's very thin, like, that doesn't look as good as something that's a little more intimidating. But I'll guarantee you, this one over here is way better to eat because it's just nice and easy to handle. These will just be done whenever you think they're done. So I'm going to rotate them one more time. And just in the vein of this, some tear. Get like two of them, yeah. Move those down, spread them out. Again, this is something like these are so simple, but like, man, these sound like I'm clearly making something super intricate and intimidating because you can hear them sizzle and they're all brown and it's got all these intricate parts. But no, it's so simple to make a box, so simple. So I'm going ahead and transfer these over here for right now while I talk about wrapping. So. I'm, this is a big deal for me for like wrapping burgers because to me it's a big part of how you consume it because holding the burger together is a big deal. Sometimes with what, like these burgers, I will use a toothpick. It works. It's not ideal because inevitably I'll be that guy and I'll forget there's a toothpick in there and you go for that one bite and you just hit wood. It's not as fun. But uh, a good wrap burger, it just, it's easier to consume. It's honestly more fun. It holds the flavor and it's just, I don't know, it's simple. It just works. It's something where it's like, one of the things I actually kind of strive for, I feel, is I like the idea of having more, I guess I could say like restaurant quality food, particularly in terms of presentation. Because like there's a reason they do that. Like yeah, it's like, you know, to probably save on having to do dishes, but it actually does, I think, add a lot to it, even if it doesn't affect the flavor. So I'm gonna put this down. So I'll generally get a nice square piece of foil. You can use wax paper, you can get pre-cut stuff for this. I'm going to fold this in. You can do shiny side up, shiny side down. Really, it's not a big deal for this whatsoever. But the reason I do this is one, it looks better because inevitably I probably have, say, a side like this that's not even. And then it gives me that nice even edge, like as if this was completely intended and I know the exact dimensions for my burgers. And I can tell you, like, there's at least three different ways to wrap these, so don't feel bad at all to just like make up your own thing. But I like to get it like halfway, like right there on the edge. Generally, just kind of gauge it. So, like, I want to go like right there. I'll touch the back, fold in, and then I'm going to just like run my hands down the side, like so. Usually, get it off, and then just wrap it like that. Now, this is usually to be like eaten right away, so that's why I always leave it open because that gives you a nice, like, easy way in. If you are, say, like, I don't know, save me for five minutes to go serve somewhere else. Then you can wrap it all the way, but this just seems perfect where it just fits nice right alongside a plate. Honestly, if this was like my kitchen just at home, if you just ball it up and get your hands around it, totally fine. And especially again with like these where it's so easy for this to just slide around, it's a big deal. Okay, and toss those there. Grab our kebabs right off. So you think knife skills give you a steady hand, but usually it's this where I gotta get my finger half an inch from the stove top. That's where I feel like you really learn to just like perfectly, dexterously grab stuff. Much more, though, than, say, grabbing a sharp blade, even though you'd think it'd be the other way. 
Also surprising, like this metal's been sitting over here cooking. Not that hot, actually. Like I can generally pretty much just grab right on. But if you want to use tongs, you can. Cool. So, I'm gonna go ahead and add these over with the rest. And this would be something where generally I would just kind of give them out as they come, because usually they belong to a specific group, but then we have that. So it's kebabs, we got spam, pineapple, onion, mushroom, tomato, alongside our buns, which are again, these are Kaiser rolls. They, they can vary a lot, it's bread, but it's got spam, ground beef, Colby Jack, pineapple, and homemade buns. And that's the meat of the meal. So the next big thing within going in and talking about how I make these and just like, that's its own thing. It's a whole thing I can talk about all day because it's just, bread's awesome, but these are something I've been a huge fan of because burgers are just a great staple and you can do so much with them, but it's got some like flair to it because usually most people, if they're coming over, they won't have, say, a pineapple alongside of it. And like, honestly, a lot of times I cook this for like family or friends, they don't regularly eat spam. They don't regularly eat pineapple, but they eat burgers. So it's a nice little thing where it's like merging oh, you know this one thing, here's these flavors you're aware of. Let's bring them all together and really kind of understand how they work in. It usually turns out pretty well. 